This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Stay tuned to find out more. Although they may intersect, there's some bold voices out there who will always believe that art and business can be separated when you remain true to yourself. Where others are happy to be commercialized, reupholstered, and sold as a part of a multi-pack of rappers who are all riding the same wave, the mark of a true musician is to never water down the art to feed the algorithm, even if it means you have to sacrifice a degree of success. But despite making strides in the mainstream with film roles and collabs with high-profile rappers, there's no one who had potential quite like Most Def, or as he's known today, Yassim Bey. Born Dante Terrell Smith in Brooklyn, the man who began his career alongside his siblings as a member of Urban Thermodynamics was entrenched in the culture since birth. After UTD acquired features on De La Soul Records, Mos Def was soon making such a name for himself that even his freestyles in the park would become stuff of legend. Politically attuned and spiritually switched on, Mos made his first major splash in the game alongside another name that becomes synonymous with conscious rap, Talib Kweli. Together, Mos and Talib formed Black Star and delivered a masterclass in socially outspoken, Afrocentric hip hop, which quickly made both men underground stars. And rather than be a traditional rap group, their debut project would be a launchpad for both men's solo careers. And in Mos's case, it wasn't long before he truly blew up. In his first Fader cover in 2000, he not only received praise from a hip hop icon, but the exact man's steps that he was looking to follow. Most Def has a willingness to be liberated, say Q-Tip. To not really have anything bar him from his expression is something that's just brave. And not a lot of artists have that. It's one thing that I had to kind of learn, but with him, it's something that's innate. He just has a beautiful spirit, a very even keeled person. And I think that those are things that'll make him a genius. But I just think he doesn't realize how genius he is. Even before the issue hit the shelves, the entire world was beginning to become aware of most with the release of his 1999 album, Black on Both Sides, a project which holds as much weight today as it did then. The album became an instant classic. It's a great record to me. It changed so much for me. One of the greatest things in my life. And I'm glad that there's still interest in it and people feel like it's worth their time. I'm uh, really grateful. Ever feel like subscription boxes can get a little bit repetitive? For those who don't know, a subscription box is like a streaming service, but physical. You subscribe, and in exchange, you're sent a box of items every month. The problem with these boxes is that you're usually getting the same thing every single month, and you don't even get to pick your box. With Bespoke Post, you'll never get bored again. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome, top-shelf goods from under-the-radar brands. It's free to join, and you can cancel anytime. The cool thing about Bespoke Post is that they deliver right to your door from an endlessly rotating selection of cool new products like outdoor gear, clothing, home and kitchen goods, and much more. Not sure where to start? How about the Weekender Box? It provides a specially designed mason bag with a reinforced frame and thick leather handles. Or try the Explore Box, designed to meet the needs of a true adventurer. It contains a Nomad backpack, M8 water bottle, a survival LED headlamp, and a delicious toasted coconut and vanilla bean bar. Each box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. And the best part is 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. So head over to bespokepost.com slash madness20 and take the quiz to get started. Or click the link in the description and enter madness20 at checkout to get 20% off your first order. Suddenly, those who began to dislike mainstream gangster rap had a viable alternative. Avoiding the preachiness of other conscious rappers in favor of an understated demeanor, most had the world in his hands as hip-hop progressed to the early 2000s. But as it turned out, he was too unconventional for the music industry to the point that he could no longer play its games. Meaning that from the moment he signed to a major record company, he was already beginning to see through the illusion. There's a very practice in the record industry around sales, in my opinion, he told The Fader. The emphasis is always put on performance when it comes to black folk. We have to perform quicker, stronger, and with less resources. And when we satisfy that criteria, we're still underappreciated. The labels put the emphasis on sales. They put the pressure on the artists to perform quickly and strongly. Then the artists put that pressure on themselves. And what happens is that the music suffers and then the audience suffers. And it's a domino effect. The bottom line is that if hip-hop was not selling records, they wouldn't be putting it out. These labels, they could care less about the historical relationship or the cultural relationship. They don't have any social, cultural, economic, or political sensitivity to hip-hop. A statement which touched on the pressures for rappers to remain hot or viral, most, who'd actually changed his name to Yasin Bey because he felt like a product more than a person, never played ball with the record industry. And instead of playing it safe and replicating the sound of his debut album, each of his albums were wildly different. So while The New Danger isn't comparable in sound to his quote-unquote classic album, and songs such as The Rap Over took aim at music industry figures such as Lee or Cohen, that didn't make it any less compelling. Meanwhile, his album True Magic was unveiled purely to satisfy his commitments to his record label, and even though it was seen as a flop, it still gained a Grammy nod for best rap song. To make matters more interesting, his 2009 album The Ecstatic, which is regarded as one of his best albums, isn't even available on streaming services. 
Where others feel like most threw it all away with his stance towards the industry, it's unlikely that the notion of leaving money off the table holds any weight to Yassin. As to him, artistic integrity is and was a higher calling than any amount of money. Even more than the money, the thing that I'm most focused on is that people take their time to listen to what I have to say. And I really value that because you could be doing anything, but you take that time to listen to what I have to say. Unable to betray his artistry, most believe that for him, music wasn't intended to fatten his pockets, but expand minds and shed lyrical light. Simply put, he needs to have something to say, not just an appealing or melodic way of delivering it. Me and Most Def argue about this all the time, Dave Chappelle said during an interview with Kendrick Lamar. Most is of the belief that a person with a platform has a responsibility to other people. It's the old adage, to whom much is given, much is expected. As a result of this logic, Most has been outspoken about the recklessness that rappers can distribute to the world. We gotta show them a better way. You can do whatever you like, but it does certainly doesn't hurt you or take anything away from you. It's not a huge burden to like be mindful that the world is watching, and in particular, the, the young folks. It don't mean you have to have a halo coming over your head, but certain types of attitudes, language, imagery do more harm than good, you know? Seen by Common as an inspiration for his own acting career, Moses' work in both music and acting meant that he could have been a crossover star like a Will Smith or Ice Cube. Instead, he channeled his energy into more important causes. From shining a light on the barbaric practice of force feeding at Guantanamo Bay to releasing a PSA on NYPD's stop and frisk policy, Most began to live a life that was incompatible with the entertainment industry. And in order to further remove himself from the rat race, he made the fateful decision to move to South Africa. An exit from the states that led him to eventually be exiled from the country due to his use of a world passport, Most has spent recent years living a life of a nomad. And along the way, he made the decision to step away from hip hop. And in an interview with Hot 97, he detailed why he chose his sanity over success. I don't want to go deal with that and bring that home to my family or bring that home to myself. I don't want my mom to have to inherit the f PTSD from running around in the, the rap game and the, the beefs. You see people can't get along for longer than 20 minutes. Now it's just like a lot of crazy noise, but it's dangerous because now people's egos just evolved because they did it all camera for the Instagram generation. An eternal student of the culture who counts Earl Sweatshirt, Blue, Mark Homie, JPEG Mafia, Kendrick, and Blood Orange among his favorite modern artists, it's no exaggeration to say that each and every one of them are descendants of Yassin. With Kendrick Lamar admitting that most gave me a lot of game early on, it's clear that if he wanted to, he could call upon all of his musical offspring to create one of the most illustrious projects in conscious hip-hop history. Instead, he's intent with existing and creating within his own parameters. His latest solo release, Negus, came in the form of an art installation that was held in the Brooklyn Museum and could only be listened to on the premises with your phone locked away. And while most artists would see this as limiting, this was all the exposure most wanted his work to have. Art is not just limited or restricted solely to what you can hang on a wall. It includes music as well. I had a, a strong feeling that it needed to be a more dynamic experience than simply downloading it from a device. And it's, it's a meditative, reflective sort of experience. And yet another layer of Moses' ideology, he's been adamant that he can't and won't condone the robbery of artists that takes place on Spotify, Apple Music, and other streaming services that pay a tiny percentage of streaming revenues to the artist. You mean to tell me that the source of labor at the center of this experience is supposed to be satisfied and grateful with receiving a portion of a penny for their efforts and labor? Now, whoever is else is happy with that, that's you. But when it relates to something that I'm doing and that I've been doing, I don't have to ask you permission. Some of them I just don't feel right and I'm I'm searching for a better way to do it. That's mm -hmm. completely my volition. I'm not right. here to be run by the audience's expectations because I have my mm -hmm. own needs. You mother <laughs> don't get to tell me what to do with what I make. It's between me and God. You understand? As a result of this philosophy, No Fear of Time, the long-awaited sophomore album from Blackstar and produced by Mad Lib, was released exclusively through the Luminary Podcast Network. And by taking a follow-up to a seminal album and refusing to maximize its appeal, Yassin once again proved that his anti-commercialistic stance isn't a gimmick, but an ethos that governs his every decision. Like the is. music speaks better than I don't like to get in the way of it. I was never big on being like a celebrity because that just confuses the issue. I do have a public profile, but I also recognize and never forget that the reason I have a pro public profile is the work. All of the other 
like the here and there and the movements. That's cool. But the only reason that we up here talking is because I do this and I get busy as an artist. Whether it's issues with his own catalog or refusing to play the jazz icon Thelonious Monk in a biopic until he got the family's permission, Moses Conscious never wavers. And despite the fact that everyone in hip-hop likes to say how real they are, it's no exaggeration to say that no one embodies authenticity like Yassine, for better or worse. Led by the principle that I don't respect money if I got it for something I don't love, Most has fulfilled the role he'd always wanted to play within hip-hop. And for that, he's now seen as a role model by artists old and new. Although everything he released didn't hit the highs of Respiration, Oh No, or Mathematics, it was always fascinating to listen to which version of Yasin we'd get when he stepped into the booth. And for this reason alone, he could never spit a verse again and still be respected for generations. And although Yasin isn't a superstar, but more of a cultural voice of reason, there are those such as Bootleg Kev who'd argue that he sold himself short. But to Yasin, the concept of being the GOAT doesn't motivate him. In fact, you can rest assured that when he goes to bed each night, the last thing most is thinking about is his ranking among the greats. To me, I have zero to prove. I got three careers. I have no bones to make with nobody about nothing because I'm doing my do. That's what I'm doing. I'm too busy enjoying life to be concerned about who's top five I'm in or not in. Don't even put it on a scale of ways. Off the chart, it's too heavy for the scale to say.